Hello, everybody. Welcome to a much anticipated episode of Esoteric Atlanta. I am actually super excited to see what Jenny gets. We should have Tom joining us at some point, too. He might be popping into this episode. But this episode is specifically, specifically for our brothers and sisters down in Argentina right now who are fighting against the system just like we are. And for all of the people out there whose ancestors were negatively affected by Peronism, who reached out to me, you guys reached out to me in overwhelming emails. And I'm so happy to be able to talk about this tonight with Janine. I, I have no idea what the cards are going to say. I don't think Janine does either. But if you did not see our, our part one, I'm going to put that down in the description box below if you don't know who this person is, because we're not going to go into too much detail about the whole timeline of her life. So please go ahead and watch part one first. If you don't know who Avita was or Ava Perone, please do that first so you're not lost in this video. How you doing, Janine? Good. How are you doing? Super, super good and super, super excited. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready to get started? Nope. Oh. Okay, so uh, Ava Perone, or Ava Duarte, as she was born, was born in 1919 in a very poor town in Argentina. She grew to become a radio star at first because, of course, this was right when Hollywood and the entertainment industry was first radio. And then she ended up meeting Juan Perone, whom she married. They became the leaders of Argentina. Uh, history books will say president. Most people call him a dictator. He is the one who brought in, um, we'll say the Axis side. So the N-word from World War II, the bad guys, the Axis forces into Argentina. Um, the ones that did not get their justice in the Nuremberg trials. And so, but her story has been very sensationalized. So um, there's a lot of red flags. Now that we're awake and we understand it, there are a lot of red flags. Here comes Tom. There are a lot of red flags in her story that that just shout out to me, um, dark arts, we'll say, um, that were involved in this situation. So my first question to you is, is the story we've been told about Ava Perone true or not? Hey, Tom. Hey, girls. Uh, we, we've, I've already hit record um, just to get us on cool. a time frame. And I just asked uh, uh, Janine to read if uh, Eva Perón, Avita from Argentina, if her, the story we were told about her was true or not. Cool. So, do, are you familiar with Eva Perón, Tom? Do you know a lot about her, her story? Is she, is she Avita? Mm -hmm. Madonna. I just know Madonna did a thing about it. I don't really know about it, though. Which we're going to get to that later on because that's super suspect. <laughs> the fact that Madonna yeah. played her. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Very, very weird story. Hey, Janine. Hey. There's some things true about it, but okay. a whole bunch are not true about it. So it looks like it's, it's got some truth. So we've got that page. Uh, so a very small amount is true. Uh, they okay. embellished a lot about it, including her background. I feel like they might have made up her background. I wonder if she really was born into a poor family. I wonder if she might have been a bloodline family. So this is my next question, actually, because both of her parents, um, their lineage is from the Basque region of uh, Europe, which is between Spain and France, the Pyrenees. That's the highest concentrate of Rh negative blood group. Now, her father uh, allegedly was a man named Juan Darte, Duarte, and he was very wealthy, but he had a legal family. And then he had a mistress who had Evita with her siblings and they were super poor. And when he died, they didn't get anything. It's the story. That's the story that was told. Now, the interesting thing is she ended up in Buenos Aires at 15 years old. Now, the folklore is that she was having an affair with some musician in Argentina at that time. And that's how she got into Buenos Aires. But then other people are saying, oh, no, that's not true. That's just, you know, a false story. It was her mother that brought her. But now that we know what we know about the dark arts, I'm wondering if the, folk, if the folklore story was actually true or she was possibly pimped out, as we know they do. Um, as a young girl at 15 to this uh, tango singer, I can't remember his name, so forgive me. It's in the, again, if you guys haven't seen the first video, please watch it. It's in the description box below before proceeding with this one. So it all makes sense. Hmm. It seems like she might have been, uh, as you called it, pimped out. Uh, because the reason, so I'm getting the reason she was 
uh, met the guy had something to do with money and it wasn't really to her advantage. So she's not making money from it. Somebody else was. So maybe somebody was exchanging money for the use of her, unfortunately. Was her family involved in the dark arts? Uh, her dad, I get. Okay. That makes sense because he was wealthy. Yeah. This is a wealthy man was involved who could be related to her. So I'm going to assume that's her dad. Interesting. Yeah. There's something weird around one of her brothers too. her, one of her older brothers that he kind of, after the father died, he, it's very hazy about what he did. There's some stuff he did to get the family secure. And I'm wondering if he maybe knew something about their biological. Is that, is that the that's, the, that's the dark cult card. That's my deep state dark cult. And I feel like that's weaving all the way through the background of her story. Okay. So she would have been brought up maybe even um, like uh, main mind altered. You know, I was about to ask my next question. Was she under mind control? Yeah. As yeah. like what yeah. they call them? It, yes. Yeah. yeah. An oh, ace. Oh. So I get a yes. They call them sex kittens. Is that it? What they call well, those girls? Yep. Yep. And so, so yeah, she, I think she was even younger than that 15 that they're saying. I think she was younger. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't surprise me. I, I kind of got that again when I, so we're going to get to this down, down the road, but I am familiar with Avita because when I was a child, my mother was really, really, it was really important to my mother that my sister and I be very well educated in the arts. You know, we took piano, we took theater like and she would bring us to the theater all the time so I knew every play and so I always knew about Avita because of the play the musical which we're going to get to yeah. um and they it really since sens it sensationalized her story but let's let's go down her life first now when she got to Buenos Aires she became a radio star which we know we know about entertainment industry radio back then television what they're using that for so was she placed in that position as a radio star to help uh, promote um, false uh, information. Yep. You bet. So that's everything about how she got that job was false and falsified. So now we've got somebody who's not who they say they are, doesn't have the background they said they did. And so she was placed. Yep. I, I knew it. I y'all before the great awakening, I just thought this was a beautiful Cinderella story. But the minute you go back and look at this shit, it literally, it's like, it's like Hollywood today. It's like our actors today, they're placed there by the three letter yep. agencies. I, I knew it. And she, she bleached her hair blonde as well, which we see a lot with these, um, these quote unquote sex kittens where cause she was very, you know, she was, she was from South America. She was very olive skin, dark, beautiful, beautiful woman. And then she bleached her hair blonde when she got to Buenos Aires reminds me a lot of like Madonna, which we're going to get to because Madonna played her. All right. Her husband, Juan Peron. So he was, I believe 24 years older than her when they met. Now they met at a gala for a earthquake that had happened in San Juan, Argentina, which you know, celebrities do this all the time. They did this for Katrina, all these natural disasters. They have these big events and then they raise money and then they do their parties. And it's almost like a celebration for them. And we used to like clap for them for doing this. Now we realize there's dubious stuff behind that. Now, again, her husband was 24 years older than her. I don't have a problem with there being an age gap in relationships. My boyfriend's 10 years older than me. However, that seemed that kind of was like a red flag to me because she was like in her 20s and he was pushing 50. Um, she was his second wife. He was the leader. He wasn't the president yet, but with her help, she started using her radio program to promote this idea of what's called Peronism, which is very much a dictatorship. It turned to like a dictatorship. He was really dysfunctional and hard to handle. And uh, he was, uh, wasn't going to get very far in his political career without some help. So they placed her. Uh, to give some, like to, to guide him. Was she like his handler? And yeah, she was like a handler, even though she was a lot younger. Yeah, but he was literally like floundering or whatever that word is. Yeah, uh, he had a lot of bad habits, and uh, he was uh, always just falling flat when it came to um, sort of things that he was like. They had him all placed to be a leader, but he he was uh, always pushing it. Probably because he had a lot of bad habits, it looks like. 
like and nefarious party substances drugs. and party drugs and yeah. Okay. Um, well, now that before we get to the next question about her death, um, was she actually born a female? Never thought I would have to ask that question, but here we are. <laughs> here we are in the Great Awakening. Uh, all boy cards. Wow. All right. This is going to make the next question. So she was born male and switched. Okay. So this is going to make the next question super interesting. So she oh, died. Yeah. Get this, guys. Get this, Tom. Tom numbers. Guess how old she was when she died? 27? 33. Oh. 33. Mm -hmm. And she died, quote, unquote, of... Um, ovarian cancer. Now, I don't know what they do when they switch your sex. I, I would assume that you wouldn't have ovaries if you were changed from a boy. I just would not. I don't know if they go that far. So is that the true story of how she passed away? No, that was a strategy. So that was a made up story. So this, this cards uh, changing words and things written on paper, maybe to suit a narrative, right? Because this guy's switching swords around, swords or thoughts and words to get something to work. So he's moving. So they just moved around the story uh, because she's uh, from, she's dark cult. She's a classic. She was swapped uh, gender at birth, um, raised and raised. Uh, we got a Meghan Markle here all over again. That, that, thank you. That is that, that when you said that, I was like, yes, boom, that's it. Okay, so did she really die then at 33? Was she taken out at 33? Talk about a signal, eh? <laughs> I know, right? You literally can't make this up. Like, you literally can't. Quiet. And she died long before any of us were born, by the way. So <laughs> apparently died. We'll see. Okay, all boy cards again. Interesting. Fascinating. Every single card in the thing is a, a boy, a boy, a boy. Interesting. Yeah. There's so I, think, I think she didn't die because none of them are death cards. So we have no passing over cards. So they just moved her basically then. Well, then get this because this is what happened after she quote unquote died. They had her body embalmed. Or her husband had her body embalmed. It's creepy. It's creepy. I have a, actually have one to put in our thumbnail for this. Um, and they, so they had her body embalmed soon after she passed away. Her husband was the dictator and they, he had to, there was a military coup and he was exiled to Spain. Um, they took her body. Apparently the Vatican shipped her body to Milan where they buried it quote unquote under a fake name. But there was a guy who wrote a book in 1995 about this. I think it's called Santa Avita. Um, where the, the Vatican allegedly used her body for necrophilia as it was embalmed. Now, after they, so now the story, story gets even weirder. So one, her husband is exiled to Spain, which was the, the route from, from Europe to get to Argentina was through Spain. So he's exiled to Spain at this time. He marries his third wife. They get her body back. His third wife's job now is to brush her hair every morning. Her body is laid out on the dining room table and her, she's got to go brush her hair, whatever body that is. And then they bring the body back to Argentina when he's allowed back into Argentina and becomes the dictator again. And they put her body in the, the Duarte family vault way far down, like lower than six feet down because of vandalism, which screams tunnels to me, screams tunnels to me at this point. So with all be that being said, can we figure out what the hell was going on with that crazy story of her? Her death is, her quote unquote death is almost as much as interesting as her life. So was the Vatican using her body for like necrophilia? If y'all don't know what that is, who are watching it, I'm not going to explain it to you. Go look it up. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever body that was <laughs> unbelievable well it, uh, they might have been using a body for for that okay because this is like a, a this is a famous card so because she was famous people wanted a piece of her piece Basically. of her yeah so they're 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 but but i think they were they, they must have swapped the body 
Yeah. Because I don't get she left the earth plane then. Okay, so she had three three people calling themselves her. So that w- clones, uh, doubles, I don't know. Three wow. different people playing her. So one of those people could have been used for that for sure. Wow. Now, did Juan, her husband, I'm sure he was fully aware of the whole scheme. And yes, again, guys, he was the guy that let in. He was a huge, allegedly, he was a huge fan of the uh, Axis powers in World War II. I can't, we can't say the N word, but the bad guy, he was a huge um, admirer of them and allowed them into Argentina. He had a lot of issues with that whole thing. So he actually, so he was part of the dark cult and uh, this was part of some ritual. So this was like using her or her, one of her doubles to, to, to do this was part of a ritual or a repeated ritual. And uh, yeah, he didn't like it actually. Yeah. He went along with it because they, he had his arm twisted to get it go along. And I also get money was exchanged or, or they let him, continued having the kind of wealth he had or whatever. They helped him out of some money trouble, something like that. But he had to go along with this. I don't actually get he was fully on board with it. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he had his new wife brushing out this, you know, embalmed. I mean, I said in my video, listen, ladies, if you're married to a man that's making you brush the hair of his late wife's body, you're in a bad marriage. <laughs> you need to get out of that there, hands down. That's, 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 that's a boundary that's broken. So. But I don't think these, uh, these families and these, these people, they don't expect to have a good marriage. Okay. No. They, they're yeah. placed and she was probably uh, a sex kitten as well. Oh yeah. Because she, she ended up coming back with, with Juan. I can't, I think Isabella was her name back with him to Argentina when he was allowed back in and he became the dictator again. And then when he died, she stepped in and took his place. So absolutely now. Okay. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about the musical. So Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber were the two that did the musical beat. It was their third hit. They had done Jesus Christ Superstar and Joseph and the amazing technical dream coat. Tim Rice claimed, he claims that before um, they wrote this musical, not nobody knew who Evita was outside of Argentina. She wasn't famous globally like she is now. And he saw her picture on a stamp when he was a little boy and he was mesmerized because the only female he had ever seen on a stamp was the queen because he's English. It, and that's why he had to do this play about this woman, Evita. Is that true? Is that story true or was there a nefarious reason for them to create this play that revolved around her life? I was a totally made up story. Knew it. Yeah, knew it. Yeah. He's actually incredibly narcissistic. Um, I even feel like he was a little hesitant to do it. So he might have even been told, okay, you have to do this. Tim uh, Rice or Andrew Lloyd Webber? Both of them. They did it to, or, or, oh, sorry, you're asking about, well, the question was around Tim Rice because of, of let the story okay. goes that he went to Andrew, his buddy, that they had done these two blockbuster uh, smash hits in the West End and now they're going to do this third one. And so he went to his buddy and said, I have this great idea to do this story around this Argentinian first lady and, and her crazy rags to riches story. And she died so young and she was called Santa Avita, the saint of the people. Oh, that actually let's back up a little bit. Going back to that, she had an organ. Is that, it was totally planned. It was all just a uh, uh, sort of uh, advertising. It was all just to push the whole agenda. So that's how they make money. Right. So they, this, the story was making the money. Yeah. What was, uh, what, I'll ask one more question. And then I, 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 there's a question I forgot about her life. We'll go back to that. Was the story, is the music in that story? Because every, you know, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, like Elaine Page played her. We'll get to Madonna soon. A lot of big names. Have, was this, is, is the music like a spell? Is it like a spell? Because we all know the music. We sing the music. That's a big old yes. They just, we can call them on their crap now. It's, it's just, they've made it so obvious. And then I got another yes. 
So as people continue to sing it and watch it and play it, it can keep Gross. working on you. Oh yeah. my goodness. Y'all, if you haven't seen, if you, we'll get to Madonna soon, but let me back up for a second. There was a nonprofit that Eva Perone and Juan Perone ran when they were in, when they were dictators, basically. Um, the Eva, uh, Eva Perone Foundation. Um, they like strong are, they made people donate and, uh, you know, they say they did some good, but a lot of people say that they actually were funneling money. And it sounds a lot like the foundation that's run by or was run by our dear, our dear friend Hillary, which I'm not going to say her last name, that foundation that has ties to that, that beautiful Island where it was owned by a owned by Jeff, little Jeffy, um, was that foundation they, they, was that run the same way as this other foundation that we have now today that's tied to Haiti, um, you know? It looks like it was, uh, the, the money wasn't going to the, like about 90% of it. So we got a nine, five, yeah. Uh, so most of it was being taken elsewhere, like money, but they threw a little bit of coin over, you know, just to, just, just like, didn't the, uh, that Hillary's foundation, didn't they build what, six houses or something or four? Yeah, like a smoke screen. Yeah. Like, oh, look, we're doing good. Well, I think it was literally, oh, you could count it on one hand, how many? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think too, they, they were working with like really poor, poor stricken communities in Argentina, poverty yeah. stricken and where children are easy. Yeah. So I wondered about that, that they may might have been doing the same thing that that other organization was doing allegedly, we'll say allegedly, mm -hmm. um, although we know, we know. Um, okay, cool. I, I kind of felt that way. All right. So let's get to Madonna. So Madonna played Ava Perone in, was it 1996 that the movie came out? And apparently she like wrote the director and like begged him for it to, that she had to play this role, that she felt like she was a Vita, that they were the same. Is there a reason, sinister reason, why they had Madonna cast as Evita? Because we all know about Madonna now. We all know who she is. So, Oh, yeah. It was her karmic. She felt it was her karmic duty. I want to say karmic or I want to say, let's say this, destined. She felt destined to play her. And it was going to get her more um clout with the with the club okay the bad guys so it was and she did desperately want to do that because it was going to get her ahead somehow it was some kind of stepping stone for her to get even more wealth abundance and or even more attention in the club club being the dark cult what about Antonio Banderas? He played the part of Che Guevara in the in that movie. And in real life, allegedly, Che and um, Evita never crossed paths, but Che does narrate it. And I, well, I have a feeling he was probably a um, a puppet as well. Um, but I've always wondered about Antonio Banderas. <clears throat> Are you hearing any numbers, Tom, that come up with this? I've got some questions I wanted to ask. Okay. Argentina, we love you guys. And I thank you so much for, for emailing us and letting us know that you wanted a deeper exploration into this because this is truly insightful. It's really interesting. It keeps seeing Antonio's off the earth plane. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But did he... Was so uh, that kind of answers it to me. I said, how did he get off the earth plane? It had something to do with the Alliance. And uh, somebody brought some, like somebody brought evidence or justice to him. We know he was allegedly a part of some really high up order in the Catholic church too. So when I read that, I was like, eh, okay. Um, so what, I got two more questions, then we'll go to Tom. Um, everybody said that, that Evita looked a lot like Lady Gaga. Is there any connection between Evita and Lady Gaga? Uh, Uh, well, they were both born male. Uh, 
No, I'm not necessarily getting bloodlines or, or they're not related. And they don't look like clones of each other or. And guys, remember, they do things to these people. I mean, they both bleached their hair. They both both had very dark eyes. Like, that could just be a, a coincidence. Now, yeah. the last question I'm going to ask, in a lot of commentary, and I don't even know how true the commentary is at this point, they talked about Mr. T. When Evita came to New York after it was a success in London, the Americans were very resistant to the play because it glorified, um, like, a communistic government. It glorified it. And yep. America was very resistant to that because the opposite of our of our government system. Um, and apparently they claim that Mr. T saw the play like six times in a row and claimed to love it. When I heard that, I, I immediately thought he was studying something. There was something about that that he was going to study. Or if it, is it even true? Because we, we don't even know if they, anything they say is true or not. So, <laughs> uh, I actually get he didn't see it, so I'm not seeing wow. that. Yeah. Yo, so they literally, they, in oh. the, one of the commentaries I listened to, they're like, yes, he saw it six times in a row. Maybe he was learning how to be a dictator. And I was like, no, no, no he didn't. No. See it. That's a big old fat lie. Liar, liar, pants on fire. They, they are, they will just brazenly make shit up. Okay. Wow. Okay. So there you go, guys. He never saw it. Yeah. All right. this, is, this is him towards it. Uh, that looks like he didn't even make it to it. The show. <laughs> He's resisting. <laughs> he, he probably yeah. already knew at that point exactly what they were up to, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I thought, well, if he went, he might have just been studying it. There was something he was studying. But okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to pass it over to you, Tom. Is Evita E-V-E-T-A or E-V-I-T-A? E-V-I-T-A. Okay. So Evita comes to um, 57, Tesla, Mary. George and Argentina is 89, which is August. Oh, we just lost Tom. <laughs> Let me text him. We lost you. Shoot. <laughs> I'll give him a second to see. I know yeah. it's late over there in, in the UK, but um, yeah, I will say guys, uh, if you go now, I, I, now I honestly like, even though Madonna's gross and nasty, she did do a really good job in the play, probably because she are the movie, probably because she knew exactly how to play this person because mm -hmm. it sounds like they had very similar lives, legitimately have very similar lives. Um, and if you guys want to go watch the movie version of the musical, it is available on YouTube to watch, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to people. I mean, here's the thing, guys, uh, my boyfriend actually talked about this before he dropped, jumped on in order for us to move forward into a new world where good, good reigns, we have to understand the dark. We have yep. to understand what happened. We can't I agree. ignore it. Yeah, I agree. We can't ignore the shadow part of humanity. And, and, um, and this is true in a lot of, a lot of spiritual paths, especially yoga, you, you can't ignore the shadow. And so I would suggest people looking at her story. Um, if you're awake and you go back and watch the movie or look at her story, you're going to see the, you're going to like, I did, you're going to all of a sudden, like see these red flags of what, and, and, and notice the thing about the dark arts is once you, once you figure them out, they tell on themselves, you can see it. Like, yeah. it's, like, it's true. They don't try to hide it. Like it's all there. So um, let me see if Tom got back. Let's see if I can get him. Let's see. And then um, if, if we can, I appreciate uh, you doing this so, so, so much, Janine. Um, I'll let you go. Cause I'm sure I think Tom just got disconnected. I appreciate Thanks, you jumping on last minute to do this quick little episode for yeah. us. Um, I appreciate it. And to all of, again, all of our, our, our fellow, we can't say the P word anymore because apparently that's not allowed now, but you know what we're talking about? P-A-T, you know, that word, um, the movie Mel Gibson did. So all of our brothers and sisters in this fight down in Argentina, we hear you. We see the truth for everybody's family that contacted me, that was affected by the, these, this couple and the pronism that happened. We hear you, we see you. And I do believe that the that we're at the precipice now and everything will come out and everything will be shipped and changed for all of us. So please, Argentina looks like a beautiful, beautiful country. I would love to visit, visit it one day. Hold the line guys. We're, we're almost there. So any parting words, Janine? 
Let's see. Let's see what the universe wants to say to Argentina. Okay. Uh, a lot of what you're seeing politically in Argentina is there's a shadow government underscoring your pretend government. So we got Mr. T in the White Hats, uh, some some version of them, some group of them. So uh, your your um, people are are just uh, puppet puppeted by the good guys at this point. Just by the way, and things are going to get a lot better according to the universe for people in Argentina, even though it's been hard, it says in the next six months, you're going to see a, a huge transition. Like I think the world is, I really believe the world is. Yeah. So but hold the line guys. It's coming. Time to change it up. Time to the, the karmic, uh, the karmic destiny of the world is not to be continued to be ruled by these dark demonics there. It's well, they're getting the toss. So you will not have to worry about pronism anymore, you guys. It's gone. That's yesterday's news. So please hold the line, people in Argentina. Anybody, in, and I know a lot of people from other countries in South America were also affected by them. We hear you. We see you. And, and it's all it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Just, I know it's a frustrating, Jenny and I were just talking off camera about like frustrating it is. We just want it to change. Yeah. So yeah. But it, it has to eventually, I mean, it's getting to the precipice. So, so yeah. hold the line guys. Well, Janine, I appreciate this so much. We'll have to schedule something soon again, um, okay. a bigger episode with uh, current events and all that kind of stuff coming okay. up. So, yeah. Lots of love to you. I'll talk yeah. to you soon. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys, we fooled you. We're back. <laughs> I, we just got Tom back. He, his internet messed up or his phone. What's up? He, we lost him. So he's back now. So we're going to finish up with his questions quickly before we close out again for a second time. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Janine, I've got a question about Nelson Mandela. I've been told that he was cabal. Can we look at that, please? I don't know if you've done it in the past. That's actually oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, he was. Everything about him was fake. Okay. Yeah, he was, uh, and the person that did time in that jail wasn't him. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, it, he was, he was hidden somewhere else and everything about his whole story was fake. He was a, a totally thoroughly bad guy. Right. Yeah. So a bit like the mother Teresa kind of end yep. of the spectrum. Yep. And Do we know who, who it was that was in there with him instead of him? No, it was, uh, right. I didn't get who it was, but it, I just got that he had a couple of different people playing him in various different. Okay various different times so he didn't spend even day one in a cell his really cell. yeah so, so it's all, all complete all to be uh, a martyr right okay thank you yeah. well that confirms it because uh, that's what i let elsewhere so um earlier on in the, in the other first part of the episode you were doing like he or she so there's a few actresses i just wanted to find out if they were boys or girls at birth i think i know the answer to most of them but i just like to clarify it Julia Roberts, boy or girl? Oh, she, boy. Boy. Yeah. Okay. She, she was born here in Smyrna, Georgia, which is just up the street. It's a suburb yeah. of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, okay. he's a boy. Oh, That's why God. she was with Rupert Everett for a while. Um, Cindy Crawford. Is that Mommy Dearest? Uh, who, supermodel. She's the model. She's a, she was a supermodel. She oh. went out of Richard Gear for a while. Boy. Boy. Okay. Yeah. She looks quite like um, Bruce Jenner now. Wow. Yeah. They they yeah. don't age well. Yeah. So, even like Catherine, uh, the the your your Catherine William and Catherine. She's not aging well. Right. Okay. Yeah. How do they have children if they're, I'm kind of confused uh, about that. It's always, it, they don't, sweetie. Yeah, they totally use do surrogate. they take their, their DNA though? And is that, that why the kids, I mean, were they able to take like? Personally, when I've been looking at it, all the kids are mixed outside of it. Just like uh, they just look for DNA that will match. in the bloodline. So it's all uh, health, like 
very confusing. I don't think any of the kids are directly related to the actual, whenever I was doing them on the Royals, for instance, none of the kids had anything to do with who they said the parents were. It was absurd. Yeah. Okay. Right. That makes sense. Cause I always wondered, like, I know that they all have a bump, but it's like how, you know, they have these kids that kind of look like the parents, like, how are they able to do that? But I guess, yeah, if they can find DNA, that's going to, I mean, if you could go to a sperm bank and find DNA you want, if you're a single mm -hmm. woman on our level, then they obviously know how to do that on their level to make the children look like the family members, like to look mm -hmm. like they that, yep. that biologically belong. This is y'all. This is <laughs> how about Raquel Welsh? Ooh, good one. She dated, uh, was she Mick Jagger's girlfriend for a while? No, she was like a, well, maybe she was like a huge, like sex kitten in like when I was growing up and I was born yeah. in 61. So yeah, Raquel Welsh. I mean, she was like, yikes, right? Like yikes, yeah. super curvy and stuff. Oh my goodness! You're not gonna believe this. She was a boy. Yeah, that's she's got she's got really broad shoulders and and her waist and her and her like butt are quite boyish. And when you actually when when we did Dolly Parton, she was a boy. Yeah, yeah. And when you look at her face and how much makeup, she literally looks like uh, 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 one of those uh, people that want to look like a woman who are a man. Yeah. So, you know, like, uh, like, so she comes across like she's in drag. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Say that you How about um, Bo Derek? Oh, she's a, but I, I wonder, because she's actually, a, she's a huge Republican, Bo Derek. Uh, Bo Derek was a male. Yeah, that's what I'd heard as well. <laughs> she was 10, right? In the movie 10? She was 10, yeah. And there's an English girl called Cheryl Cole, who's oh, kind yeah. of, yeah, we can look at Cheryl please mm -hmm. oh. oh man hilarious okay so uh, interesting could have been a girl but uh okay. from old family though is she okay but these are this is girl and girl so born a girl but okay. she was still she was in the in the dark cult right so she could have had SRA or programming or. Yeah. It's usually the oldest child. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it like a lot of times the oldest child that gets the change? Sometimes it's all of them, but, and then the other ones are used for other purposes or something. I know there's some like some yeah. guidelines. They Sometimes use. they do all of them like uh, Trudeau's, all of their kids are swapped. Well, Justin right. Trudeau. Was now they're five. saying that Justin Trudeau's wife, even though she's this little tiny thing, is a male was a male and when you start looking at it actually it could be true and that he might be a female it's like <laughs> really <laughs> pretty boy yeah wow boy. what about um you spoke about andrew lloyd webber and tim rice andrew lloyd yeah. webber dark cult or dabbled with it or got out what's the, what's the truth about andrew lloyd webber okay what was that about again that was he was in the movie he he's yeah. part of the the musical Evita and other other you know Jesus Christ superstar and Phantom of the Opera. Acts, he wrote Phantom of the Opera. Acts, yeah, yeah. He, he used to be married to Sarah Brightman. Whether that was a real marriage or not, again, I don't know. He looks like he was forced to do those things because okay. uh, he was part of the. He owed these guys, so okay. he had to do their bidding. Right. That makes sense. Um, I mean, he was very talented, so he could do the spell casting with the music and, you know. Yeah. And last question. Uh, X Factor here in the UK has stopped now after 17 years. Um, Simon Cow is the head of that. Yeah. And so just wondering, is that, I mean, I'm assuming it was all part of the cult, but I'm just wondering what, you know, what info we can get on that by looking at it. So it's Simon Cow is one of his, one of his productions and now it's all stopped and it's going to, they're going to do something else. But you know, if that was his kind of main thing really, and it's just stopped. And Cheryl Cole was one of the judges on that for a while as well. Mm -hmm. So something, uh, something big happening around a judgment to do with him huh. and about uh, things hidden about his life that you might not know about. 
Okay. So he might be facing judgment is what I'm getting. And then this was him. So he might actually have been rounded up. Yeah. Well, he would had that whole thing that was about breaking his back last summer. Yeah. And it was very peculiar. The codes on it were, it was all like, it just didn't seem particularly real. And then when you saw him, the new version, he looked like he did, definitely had a face job again or, you know, a, yeah. an actor or a clone or something of yeah. him. You're talking about Simon Cowell, right? Yeah. 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 I, I, would, that, I would definitely, because he's big here in America too, with American Idol, I would definitely say, I, I, just, I would be shocked if he wasn't. Dirty. They just literally use these guys' image, and I think they make multiples of them. And we've been told that they do. Yeah. And so many people have such a hard time with that, but it's like, we're just going to need to get over it. There's clones, yeah. and they make multiples of all these people. Yeah. And uh, it's starting to become really obvious, almost painfully obvious. I mean, guys, we don't even know what we're standing on. We don't even know what the earth is. Like, that's how much we've been lied to. So we just have to be ready for anything because at this point, I mean, I've been, I'll let you guys know, I'm starting Monday, which this, I'm going to air this episode Sunday. So tomorrow we're we'll starting our new series on New Orleans. And so I've been doing a lot of digging into like vampirism. And I wouldn't be, even be shocked if some of these people have actually been around for a lot longer than yeah. normal human life. So um, they always tell us the truth in the movies. So, yeah, they do. They so do. I am, One I, last, last question, girls, before we go. Um, August 15th, Janine has been brought up a few times. I did a newspaper decode on that today and it was, it was there on the front of the newspaper. So August 15th, what do you see around that, please? August 15th, uh, something looks planned to do with uh, Mr. T. Okay. So there's a big plan, and or, or he might have eaten, something could have already gone down, and then the fallout because this is in the past, and it has something to do with Mr. T. And this guy's more in the public, so maybe he publicly gets reseated. Or yeah, is that it, just yeah. that's just happened maybe can we ask the direct question will he be inaugurated publicly on august 15th because that's what steve bannon said um and then he said later in august and i think mike lindell said about august and that is the desire okay that is the that's what they're sh shooting for okay come on guys that's like Two weeks from now, so because August fit the numbers on August fifteenth. August is eighty nine. Fifteenth is ninety three. Add them together, it comes to one hundred eighty two, which is the inauguration. Inauguration is one four nine, and the inauguration is thirty three plus one four nine comes to one eight two, which comes to August fifteenth. Wow! So you know, yeah. but it, and I will say too, um, Mr. B here in America is enforcing the uh, cure for all of our military by September one, which totally goes against any type of Nuremberg law or anything like that. And so basically it feels like we're at, like, we don't, we literally can't go any further. Like, I don't like, buy yeah. any of it. I don't buy, I think all of that stuff gets dropped. I mean, it should have already, but I feel like that's yeah. going to, they're yeah. going to have to drop it because it's not going to make people are gearing up for so many lawsuits. It isn't even funny. Like there's no way they could survive that with yeah. uh, the amount of awoke people, right? Awakened people or yeah. whatever. And it's our constitution, the American constitution does allow for Americans. I'm not going to say the, maybe I'll write the M word on the screen, a group of people. It allows for a group of citizens to get together in an organized group and go to the Capitol and basically change the capital off to be, be careful about what I say and replace the leader with another leader. Like we have that, that we are allowed that. Don't understand what I'm saying. Um, no. uh, I'll say it and I'll bleep it out of militia to go in and overtake that our constitution yeah. allows for that because we have the right to these things, you know, yeah. these things. Um, and the military, uh, there's been police officers around the country and the United States military that have been putting videos out because the Mr. B wants to take these things away from us. And that's our second amendment, right? You can't mess with the constitution and the military has been putting out videos saying our men in the military and women saying, if he were to try to do that, who do you think is going to be the one coming to confiscate that it would be the military and the military is not going to let that happen. The military stands with the people. The military would be helping the people organize yeah. to then have a second, you know, American revolution yeah. at that point. And yeah. so we're at that precipice where we can't go any further without there being like a massive 
mm-hmm. massive thing happen. So, so hold on guys. We're, we're almost there. We're almost there. And then we can all just burn these face diapers all together. I never want to see another face diaper oh. as long as I live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Janine, did you get, did you manage to get those pictures I sent you of those portals in Vancouver? I know I saw your mini video of you being in Vancouver in the last week. And I just wondered if you were able to see what happened if I don't, if I'm not hooked up to Wi Fi, which I wasn't a lot of the time. Oh, okay. What could have happened is they won't come through on Messenger. And then I just don't get them. But no, apparently there's some kind of beautiful portal. I can't remember the name of it, but somewhere in Vancouver, there's like this bridge and supposed to be a really special energetic portal but maybe we could look at that next time but uh well i just made me think there a lot so yeah okay cool you know that before we sign off i shared janine's video from vancouver the emergency she won she did y'all can see it on my community tab where she read the military guy that's you you know what i'm saying about even though he's he's not necessarily a a trump lover i we did so we discover now but at the same time he did have a good point to get your house in order for sure yeah, and I want somebody asked me about like animal f- supplies and uh, about cats specifically. And this is my advice to you guys because obviously, you know, I have a dog. We have lots of dog food, but if you cannot find enough cat food or dog food to store it for your animals, go and you can use Google for this. This isn't sinister. See what human foods work for your animals. So type in like eggs, felines, and see if that's okay on their system. Our dog can eat eggs and rice and potatoes too. Somebody asked me about that. So I just want to put that out there. If you have cats or dogs, just figure out what human foods can also work for your animals as well. So you have a lot of that on storage too, just in case that's needed for a particular time period where we might need a backup with uh, more food and water and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to put that out there since somebody asked about that. Cause yes, our, our, our pets, you're a cat owner, right? Janine, you have yep. cats. What do you know? Any human foods that work for cats that won't mess up their system for felines? Well, my cats don't eat human food. They, I try to feed them even fish. They won't eat it. Okay. Uh, they only like cat food. <laughs> So I bought a whole bunch of dry <laughs> food in case, and then I will just put a little bit of wet food to entice them. And then they end up eating the dry food with the wet food okay. on top. So you, I could stretch it for probably weeks with the dry food amount I have, as long That's as I put idea. a little wet food on. So buy, you know, enough for a week of canned food, if but it's expensive, I know, for the good stuff. And then you just put it on top the dry food and then entice them into it. All right. So cat owners, somebody asked about a cat, like I'm a dog owner, so I'm not 100% sure. So there you go. That's an awesome idea. Uh, The good thing about cats is when push comes to shove, they're hunters. So they will go and hunt. My cat is a nasty hunter. Like she'll get rabbits. She'll get birds of all sorts, unfortunate (laughs) for the birds and bird lovers. And but mice, like she's unbelievably good at catching mice. There's no mice anywhere near our place ever. Yeah. Does she leave them on the doorstep as like a little gift for you? That's what our cat yeah. used to do. Yeah, usually yeah. partially uh, chewed up. Yeah. So yeah. I'll tell you a funny story for, before we sign off. My father is a veterinarian, and uh, I had a friend once who could, he, he had a, a rodent problem in his house, and he had a cat. And, but he couldn't figure out how to end his rodent problem. And my dad just goes, stop feeding your cat. Just stop yeah. feeding your cat for a couple of days. And so he did it. All of a sudden, he didn't have a rodent problem anymore. <laughs> so so cat and dogs, my dog, he's like a little prince here. So we ha- we actually serve him his food on a tolly dish from India because he's from India. So so there you go, cat lovers. get Our cat owners get wet food and a bunch of dry food. And just you, you probably had to trick your kids before to get them to eat something they didn't want to eat. So you just got to do that with your animals too. And we're in a situation yeah. like this. So, yeah. all right. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I will Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Bryce. Bye.